There's double duty and also double decker, but how about duo pianists? Horowitz and Stecker! Normally it's Stecker and Horowitz, but what the hell rhymes with Horowitz? All right, so um, I have to, of course, call them Mr. Horowitz, Mr. Stecker, because they, they ran the piano school where I took lessons when I was a kid, so I can't possibly dress them as Norman. <laughs> Too embarrassing. Sure you can. Uh, no, it's just scary. Um, okay, so guys, you are a dual pianist, which is something, first of all, I don't even know if kids today know what a pianist is. So there's something called the piano, that's A. It's an acoustic instrument. And then on top of that, you guys started playing piano together. So first of all, um, so Mr. Horowitz, where did you grow up? I was born right here in Manhattan. Uh, old school. Uh, and uh, my father was a traveling man. He was a pharmacist. So he used to go from one location to another. And I had to move with him. Oh, wait, you were born here, but you had to go all around the country? No. Brooklyn, the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's really dramatic. Okay, uh, Mr. Stack, where are you from? Far Rockaway. Oh, my God. Totally right near kind the of. Five towns. Five towns. That's where I grew up. Okay, so you guys are basically me. So, growing up, when, how old were you both when you began taking lessons? I, at that time, I was a little bit older than most people. I was eight and a half. Oh, that is older than most people. I was five. Right. What about you, Mr. Horitz? Uh, I played the moment I could really reach the keyboard. Really? Yeah. And uh, that was very frustrating for my brother, who was two years and eight months older than I. He'd been studying at the age of five and six, and I knocked him away. Yeah, yeah. We all went through that, the yeah. old better-than-our-siblings routine. I handled that. Uh, my, my big triumph was, there was, when I was a kid, there was, coming around the mountain, I was supposed to learn the... It was like a two-hand piece, and then my teacher was going to play the other part that was on the other side of the book, and I was like, watch this! And I played both, and I was like, oh my God! And he brought the house down. Another uh, episode, huh? That was from the John Thompson book. Okay, so then, so I assume you guys went to college, you majored in piano, that old chestnut? Yes, and we took lots of courses in many places, but we started touring. Wait, you mean you met before college? Yes. yes. What? Where? We met at the age of 17. Norman was at Queens College, and he came to the conservatory where I was studying. What conservatory was that? Conservatory of Hard Knocks? Uh, the Institute of Modern Piano Technique. Uh-oh. <laughs> it died. Barbara's on career school. Now, wait, are you allowed to say what year this was? Sure. What? Sure. I don't know. Uh, I graduated high school. It's funny. We both graduated high school the same month, the same year, although we're nine months apart. <gasps> and Norman loves to tell everybody he's nine months younger. Oh, brother. Okay, so what year did you graduate high school? 49. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just just a blink of an eye. And okay, we so did, we didn't know each other at the time, but oddly enough, at the final when we, at graduation time, we each played an arrangement of the Tchaikovsky Concerto, the first movement. He did it in Brooklyn, and I did it in Far Rockaway. Well, you both chose the same piece. It's amazing. I love it. And then, how'd you guys meet online? No, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it worked back then. Uh, yeah, the clothesline. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we, uh, I came to the same conservatory on 79th Street. Oh, nice. I had been studying with the head of Curtis Institute. Curtis is like the fanciest, schmanciest. I mean, even more than Juilliard, because it's really exclusive Curtis. Because yes. there it's all scholarship. Yeah, it's literally free. And you get, at least in my day, you got your own apartment with your own piano. Uh -huh. Like, here's an apartment and a piano. It was amazing. And it's very small, 150, perhaps, too. Wow, I guess you were good. Okay, so you were there, and then you went to... No, but I wasn't at Curtis. I was studying with the head of the department, oh, Isabel Van Gerber, who was Gary Grafman's teacher, Jacob Latina's teacher, Bernstein's teacher. I mean, she was really the best in the business, supposedly. But um, it was difficult, and uh, I had heard about this phenomenal woman whose name was Hetty Spielta, and uh, she had this conservatory on 79th Street. And so I asked for an audition, and immediately she gave me a scholarship. What did you play? Oh, I played a lot of Mendelssohn, Chopin, Liszt, things like that. Okay, but I was already uh, 17. So you were, you were obviously excellent. And the two of you met, and you said instead of hating each other and competing, why don't we become dual pianists? No, actually, at the time when Norman came to the school, I was preparing for a Carnegie Hall concert with 60 members of the New York Philharmonic. As a soloist? And, yeah. Woo! Playing a Liszt, a Liszt concerto. Ow. And one thing that was very interesting... Um, I had to come on stage without a rehearsal. Wait, why? So that was quite... They couldn't afford it. <laughs> oh, they didn't want to hire the Philharmonic for a rehearsal, so they yes. just said, just play, it'll yes, be fine? It was a youth concert. <laughs> no, but he had to rehearse with the conductor prior to it. 
Oh, well, with no orchestra playing, so he was That's just right. like, da, so, da. In place of the orchestra, <clears throat> Norman played the orchestra part on the second piano. Oh. And that's how we started. But then the following April, oh, I made my debut at Carnegie Hall, the big hall. And um, I was very fortunate. I had a very big house because I came from Far Rockaway, so all of Far Rockaway turned All out. the schools and synagogues. And I was 19 years old in age. After that, we decided that during the summer, uh, perhaps we'd go out and try to get an engagement or two as a two-piano team. Was that like a thing back then? Oh, the Borscht Belt was the biggest thing. But you the Borscht Belt wanted dual pianos? I they wanted singers. They wanted dual They pianos. wanted everything. Everything. We had, so we thumbed our way up to the Borscht Belt, <laughs> and we made uh, an appointment with somebody who owned the Beaver Lake Lodge. And then we heard about um, some sort of a, a talent scout show, uh, and we were asked to come on that night, and we waited two and a half hours right. to get an appearance on stage, mm -hmm. fighting with some of the people who were getting in before us. Mel had a big battle with none other than... Well, he was getting quite known at that time in the Borscht Belt. And uh, he had shows and so on, so I was getting a little annoyed that he was going on before us. But it turned out that it was Buddy Hackett. <laughs> and you were like, get out of my way, you know talent? Right. He's like, I'm actually not talent. <laughs> but we did, the owners booked us for four people. We were very entrepreneurial. We had two singers with us, a soprano and a baritone. But was your act, I mean, Borscht Belt, was it comedy? Was like no, a funny thing happened? It was sort of a uh, light, sort of First semi Rhapsody in Blue. Oh, that's my one piece that I still know. And, uh... Oh, same with us. And, uh, <laughs> really? It's a one piece thing. One I can still play. Everything else completely forgot. So we Continue. went up to the, we played with the four of them. The four of us appeared and uh, we received $116 for the four of us. And then Norman and I had to go back to New York and join the union for $50 a piece. But one of the light <laughs> motifs was when they introduced us at a concert, they said, now we present Stecker and Horowitz and I have two Steinbergs, two uprights painted white. Wait, Steinbergs? That's right. You know what? I can't. Okay, so here's the it's deal, y'all. But <laughs> I, believe me, I get the joke. I'm Jewish. But the the point is, you guys, are, you become such musical sort of um, philanthropists. Like you have a. You but the first the, five years, we did only pop stuff. Well, but pop back then was like cold. Boy. No, yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Right. 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 No, it wasn't like you know, like All Black We get on a train, we go to Cleveland, Ohio, and we played at Mushy Wexler's theatrical. You know, Wishy or Mushy? Mushy. Pushy? Mushy. <laughs> that's a first name? Mushy Wexler. I can't. I didn't. I didn't. Now that's someone's bar mitzvah. So, but that was your actual gig? Yes. We played with Ellie Frankel Trio. We played. Uh, was anyone not Jewish? They've never heard more Jewish names before in my life. Oh, our Frankel. first manager was Tony Cabot, alias okay. Caputo. Then, oh, okay. An Italian. But we're telling everybody about the scholarships you do because I feel that's the impressive part. You're feeling the well, part. After the uh, five years of the lighter circuit. Then we got a very good management and we started touring. You were with Cami, right? Yeah, yeah for 40 fancy. years. But then well, one of the provisions were that we had to have two Steinway Grand Pianos and a truck. That was in your contracts? Mm -hmm. so Otherwise we wouldn't get a concert. Oh, they, the towns didn't have two pianos. So what would they haul out? How would they haul out? We bought a truck and we got two pianos. So you traveled around with your pianos? First five years, we drove two concerts, Steinway Concert Grand Pianos, D, nine feet long. Double we D's? drove around the country. And who did the driving? We did. I took the tough routes on the mountains, and he took the lower you were the You were the tour managers as well? You were the roadies? <laughs> we were the player pianos, the piano players. We were everything. And then following that, then we had drivers for 35 years on the road. Did you ever do like Ed Sullivan or any of those old school yeah, teachers? years ago. I, I did the, one of the things I did before Norman uh, was I appeared when I was, I think, 16 on the Arthur Godfrey Talent Scout. Holy, well, um, two people in the audience over 50 are like, wow, everyone else <laughs> is staring. But who won the time? Yeah, who won that? Florian Zabak? Florian Zabak, the you violinist. Oh, what, oh, so it was actual competition. Yeah. I was thought it was just a variety no, show. No, there were four people, but then the judge, the audience, by applause, one was the winner. Rude. Now, why did you never do like the big fancy Tchaikovsky competition or any of those things? For we, two pianos? Because we were on the road. Oh, they didn't even have those. We were right. on the road and already an established pianist. Wait, time. so you actually were able to make a living as a duo piano team? It just seems like such an odd thing that doesn't exist anymore. Well, when, go ahead. Well, when we toured, there were about 2,500, 3,000 venues in the United States. 
phenomenal. We would go back to North Dakota or in Fargo. We'd go to uh, Red Devil. We'd go to uh, Shadron, Nebraska. We'd go two, three times. Do these towns even times. exist anymore? I've never heard these names in my life. <laughs> we would play either Blue the straw. local high school, the, um, uh, we'd play at a movie theater. What was 4,000, 3,500 venues has now dwindled down to 200. So oh. depressing. What happened to live music? I can't take it anymore. That's right. Okay, so... So, so that's... So we then were able course. to sustain ourselves very well. And then, of course, we played five, six concerts a week, and we went on tour for 17, 18 weeks a year. What about tendinitis? Ow, does anything hurt? Uh, no, but then how we got involved with education and scholarships was uh, we were playing in South America with under the aegis of... <laughs> Just on a scoring. Yes, continue. Under the aegis of President Eisenhower on a cultural exchange tour. Wait, when he was president? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay keep going. <laughs> Everything is like, I was talking to Mozart, and he said, all right, go on. <laughs> we were not then alive. Okay, that's fine. And then uh, I got ill in Costa Rica. From what? He drank the water? I told you not to. He uh, lost 51% of his blood. Wow, what about body weight, though? Because I'd kill for that. Did you lose any weight from it? He almost lost his life. Oh, well, all right, well, that's a secondary well, We came thing. back and we thought we should have a backup. But we continued touring after that for 35, 40 years. But we then bought a piece of property. In, in the five Cedars, towns. And started the school in 1960. And I looked up my records today. That was pre-computers, and it's easy for me to find. And I saw that Seth Rudetsky came in in... What year? Do you know what I'm going to say 1983? Two. 1982. And you were there, 82 and 83. And what amazed me today, which I thought was phenomenal because of all you do now, yes. you had started in voice yes. and piano, and the book that you purchased at the school was Italian Arias and Songs, Art Songs. <sighs> we call that the Hardcore 24. We ha I had to sing that horrible Caro mio I'm so boring. Yeah, it killed me. <laughs> it was so boring. And then I studied with you, Mr. Robinson. I remember I was playing on um, that horrible uh, so hard. Fantasy Prompters. Yes. I keep trying to play it. I don't know why. You're so much better as a teenager than you are as an adult. Like, I can't believe I ever played that. Now my hands hurt. But I was able to play it back then. No. Well, you're, you're By the way, he's that's like, not really. It was a subtext. That's called <laughs> memory. Well, I guess so. <laughs> but you're always talking about everybody else, but you were a very dynamic, outstanding talent. You were. Wow. He was uncontrollable. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was the compliment? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I mean this in a complimentary way. Here's a perfect example. You heard of maybe the, the composer Walter Piston. Yes, of course. He wrote you guys a, a concerto, concerto for us, yes. But he was head of Harvard for 35 years, and one of his students was Bernstein. And he told us that he could never teach a thing to Bernstein. Never. Oh. Because Bernstein was always one step ahead of him or wanted to do it his way. Yeah, I wouldn't say I was one step ahead. I think I was just like, eh. yeah. No, but <laughs> Seth was really just, he's, he was an enormous talent for his youth. And he is now at this point. But um, oh. he really is. God, pathetic applause. So, yes. Yes. And anyone who, who was trying to discipline somebody into a form, and wants to work with Seth Rudetsky, forget about it. <laughs> it's true. I always have to be in charge. It's very hard for me to uh, to follow. But it, when I went to conservatory, I sort of wound up, I mean, I did okay. I wasn't actually kicked out. But I always, like, played, like, the scandalous pieces. That's what I was playing. Like, concerto went, eh, for rap. I always play like, the non-classical mm -hmm. pieces to, to shock the conservatory. Okay, stop <laughs> focusing on me. So the point is, now, so I have, first of all, you have, I know you have a book out already, and, which is crazy about all your travails, but how can people get involved in your scholarship? How can they apply for your scholarship? Well, we have a foundation now that we started uh, a long time ago, in 75. And uh, the basic thrust of the foundation is the New York International Piano Competition, yes. which now brings uh, enormous talents from all over the world. We have a biennial uh, competition. The, new, the next one's coming up in two, uh, 2016. And um, we give out approximately fifty thousand dollars in scholarships. Isn't that great? To that, however, oh. we do, um, in addition to that, provide about thirty to thirty-five concerts a year, and we present these young talents in concert in New York, all open to the public for nothing. That's so. How can people that love classical music just go on our line, Steckerinhorowitz.com or steckerinhorowitz.org? Actually, 
And you can, the whole listing of all the concerts are available. There are four through the Skirball Center at Temple Skirball Emanuel. Skirball is amazing. I love it down there. Yeah, no, but it's on, with, affiliated with Temple Emanuel on 65th Street. Always with the Jews. Yeah, continue. No, <laughs> wait, 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 no, no. Mushy. We've been at Park Avenue Christian. We've been, uh, oh. Oh, we've been a lot of places that have Church of the Annunciation in Washington, D.C. You run the religious gamut. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fairfield University. Fairfield we Denise still present for concerts at Fairfield I University. I love because they're so vital. So it's Stecker and Horowitz, and, you know, you can basically Google it. If you can't spell it, it'll still come up. It's Stecker. People say Steckler, but it's not. Stecker and Horowitz. No, they usually say Stetcher. Yeah, well, that too, because it's C-H. Anyway, so I called them this morning. I sort of put them on the spot. I was like, you please play something? And there was a lot of, but I don't know if we possibly can, but um, surely you can. This piano bench won't really fit both of your behinds, but do you want to walk over the piano and see what you can haul out? We used to dedicate it to all our young folks who were sitting in the audience, so I dedicate it to our young folks who were sitting in the audience. Sorry, Betty.